Blender is finally giving us some new nodes that let us take advantage of volumes. I'm mostly talking about the volume cube node and the mesh to volume node. At the time of recording, these nodes only exist in the 3.3 alpha, so if you want to follow along, you have to download that. I'll put a link in the description, but if you want to stay up to date more easily, I highly recommend this Blender launcher made by DotBow. It makes it super easy to manage multiple versions of Blender, and it's completely free. Anyway, let's hop into Blender version 3.3 alpha, and first thing we're going to do is bring in a Suzanne mesh. Uh, we're just going to experiment with this shape later, so I want to use something complex like this. I'll hit Control 2 to add this subdivision modifier, apply that, and now let's go over to the Geometry Nodes workspace. So to make our cheese, we're going to delete this group input right here, and the node we're going to add in is called Volume Cube. We can just plug that in. And you can see what's happening is we just have a cube that's like filled with this fog right here. You can change the density with this slider right here. And if you look carefully, you'll notice that it is a diamond, which means we can plug fields into here. That means if we want, we can plug in textures like the Voronoi texture. So let's just plug the distance into the density and immediately you can see that the clouds start changing like this. It's a little more apparent what's happening if you turn the scale down. I'll set this to two. And we can also change these values in here. So by default, the Voronoi texture outputs a range of values from zero to one. So if we add a math node and start subtracting those values, you'll start to see more holes appear. And what's fun about this is that we can turn this back into a mesh. So let's bring in the volume to mesh and plug this in. And you can see already we have something that's starting to look like a cheese cube. By the way, this is not called the cheese node. I changed it for the thumbnail by pressing F2, and you can just rename it like this to whatever you want. So now it is the cheese node. So as I said before, we can increase the size of the holes by changing this subtract right here. We can also change the resolution of this. Like if this looks too blocky, you can turn the resolution up right here. So let's try turning it up to 64. Obviously, the higher you set this, the slower it will go. And to see how slow it actually is, you can come over here to overlays and turn on timings like that. And you just have to look at the group output for the total time it takes to calculate everything. So what I think looks a little better than just turning the resolution up really high, let's just turn this back down to 32. You can add a subdivision surface node right here. So when you add this in, it will make the mesh more dense, but it also smooths it out. And this is still shaded flat, so we can add a set shade smooth node right here at the very end. If you don't want to use the subdivision surface modifier because it's being too slow, you can delete that and come over here to your modifiers and add in a smooth modifier. Just make sure that it's after the geometry nodes one. Uh, you can just turn this repeat value up and the higher you set that, the smoother things will be. What's nice about this is that it doesn't add any geometry, so it will perform better. Now, one thing you'll notice if you go into x-ray mode right here is that there are a bunch of air pockets inside. This is actually a pretty cool feature because if you were to set this to have a transparent material, you'd be able to see all of the air pockets inside. We can add a material at the very end right here with a set material node. And we don't have any materials yet, so I need to add one. We can click this new button right here, and I'm just going to name this cheese, and then we can actually set it to use that material right there. So now let's go into the shading workspace right here. I'm going to use cycles for this, and I already have a lighting set up right here. So just to see what it looks like, let's turn the transmission all the way up and the roughness all the way down. If you look carefully, you can actually see all of the little bubbles inside, and it's a pretty nice effect. So let's make this look like cheese now. So turn the transmission all the way down. I'm going to turn the roughness up a little more. Now I want to change the color, so I'm going to bring in an RGB node and plug this into the color right here. I want to set this to like a yellow orange and let's just turn the saturation down a little bit. Now I think this needs some subsurface scattering so we can set that to 0.1 and plug this into the subsurface radius and the subsurface color. Turning a volume into a mesh has been possible with geometry nodes for quite a while now, but the way I was doing it before was by scattering points, turning the points into a volume, and then back into a mesh, like I showed in my water droplet video. It requires a lot more work to get it looking good, especially when you want to make solid objects like this. Other people have tried making similar setups in geometry nodes, like Arendelle who made this, uh, wow. 
this marching cubes video. Clearly, stuff like this takes a ton of work to make. You can actually have the power of Arendelle by getting their Geometry Nodes toolkit so you can use all of the nodes that they make. What's awesome about this volume cube node is that it's just one node. It's easy to use, and if the Blender developers keep pushing in this direction, we'll have much more powerful tools soon. Let's see what other things we can actually do with this node. So obviously you're not limited to the Voronoi texture. So let's just add in a noise texture and mess with the subtract like that. We can also turn the detail all the way down and the scale down to something smaller like two. So this could be nice for if you're trying to generate cave systems, something like in Minecraft, or if you're trying to make landscape scenes, things like that. You can also change the scale of this by adding in a position node hooking it up to the vector right here, and in between, you just want to put a vector math node set to multiply. So turn this up to 1, that will give us our original scale. And you can turn up or down any of these values. When you do that, you'll see the texture starts stretching like that. Another cool thing to do is changing this to 4D and affecting this W value right here. You can automate that by adding in a scene time node right here and plugging the seconds in like that. This would be really nice for abstract animations. Another cool thing you can do is affect the factor right here with another math node. So we'll add one in, set it to ping pong, and we'll just have this be set to one right here. We'll add another one set to multiply before that. And when we turn the multiply up, we'll start getting a bunch of rings. And this will look better if we turn the resolution up to something a little higher, like 100. And we can get some really cool abstract shapes like that. If you don't like that this is a cube and for some reason you want this to be a sphere, you can also do that. Delete all of these nodes with Control X and add in a gradient texture. We can set this to be spherical and we can plug the factor into the density. And now we have a sphere. All of the same tricks are going to work with this setup, except that you're starting with a sphere instead. What I like to do is change the vector going in before it. You can just add these three nodes and then multiply it and affect this multiplier right here to get interesting results. This could be like a virus or something, I guess. So let's check out the mesh to volume node now. So I just made a new node tree and this time we do want to use the group input so that we can see Suzanne right here. So let's add in the mesh to volume node right here. It immediately will turn Suzanne basically into like a cloud. We have this fill volume option. We turn that off. You can see it's basically just like a shell instead. And we can change how thick that shell is with these two values right here. So exterior is going to make it push out. Interior will make it push inward like that. Right now, this isn't very different from just adding a volumetric shader to your objects. I guess one benefit it has is that this will work in Eevee. Let's quickly just add a shader to this to show you what it looks like. So shift A, set material, and we can make a new material over here. Go back over to shading. Basically what I'm gonna do is just delete this principled shader right here and add in a principled volume. And we can turn the density up like this to make it just like a more dense volume cloud. If you want this to render a little better, you can just go over to your light paths and turn your volume bounces up a little. So one thing you'll notice immediately is that this kind of has a jagged edge. So if we go back over to geometry nodes, you can see we have this voxel amount right here. So turning that up will make it higher resolution, but as you can see, it will make it take longer to load. One unfortunate thing about this node is that the density cannot be controlled by fields. So if you were to try to plug in a noise texture, you can see it won't work like that. Hopefully this is something that they will add in the future because it would be really nice to be able to add this to objects and kind of control it the way we were doing with the volume cube. One thing this mesh is really good for is basically using it like a remesh node. So you can add in a volume to mesh and turn it back into a solid shape like this. Now we do already have a remesh modifier right here, but being able to do this with geometry nodes unlocks a lot of possibilities. So for example, a thing we could do is bring in a join geometry node right here, and we can add a second Suzanne by bringing in a transform node right here, plugging in the geometry and joining it up. You can, you know, rotate these all around, move them into each other, scale them up, things like that. And if you look at the wireframe, these are actually connected and they're basically treated like one piece. Again, we run into the problem of it looking kind of blocky. So for that, I would recommend using the smooth modifier again. And once you turn that on, it does look quite a bit better. 
If you want everything that I made in this video, you can get the file on Patreon, along with coupon codes for free products, early access to my videos, and files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate a portion of the profits to environmental causes each month. Links for everything are in the description. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.